Well, good morning and welcome to this time of prayer and reflection. Today's reflection has been very kindly prepared for us by Christo Caulfield and he's based his reflection on today's reading from Luke chapter 20 about Jesus being questioned about whether it is right to pay taxes to Caesar. Um, and Christo has written a very, um, a very interesting reflection on that. So um, that's something to look forward to. After the prayers today, I will be singing um, hymn number 291 from the Red Hymn Book. Um, well, in fact, not the whole thing. Um, I will be singing the part that is known as Christ is made the sure foundation. Um, I found this hymn book a bit odd um, because in other hymn books it's got its own it's got its own number and its own name um, and here that hymn comes as verses 5 and 6 in hymn number 291 as well as the doxology at the end there's even an, a verse that hasn't got its own number but it's called the doxology um, so I'll be singing those three verses um, 5, 6 and then the last bit um, before we start now, I invite you to find a candle, if you have one at, at home, um, and let's light our candles as a reminder of God's presence with us. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. So our reading comes from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 20, and I'll be reading verses 20 to 26. So they watched him and sent spies who pretended to be honest in order to trap him by what he said, so as to hand him over to the jurisdiction and authority of the governor. So they asked him, Teacher, we know that you are right in what you say and teach, and the way you show deference to no one, but teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is it lawful for us to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But he perceived their craftiness and said to them, Show me a denarius. Whose head and whose title does it bear? They said, The emperor's. He said to them, Then give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. And they were not able in the presence of the people to trap him by what he said, and being amazed by his answer, they became silent. This is the word of the Lord. So a reflection based on that reading prepared for us by Christo Caulfield. Challenging questions. This week we have been looking at some challenging questions. They began with Sunday's sermon. Have we been feeding the soil of our hearts? And earlier in the week we heard of Jesus facing difficult questioning in the temple. Today we are still with Luke for our morning reading. Continuing in the temple, our passage details another well-known confrontation with the authorities. Should the people of Jesus' day pay taxes to Caesar? In those days, there were two major currencies, the Roman denarius and the temple shekel, and the tax structure was complicated. I was struck by the simplicity of the dialogue and the apparent naivety of the questioners, even having kept a close eye on Jesus for the wrong reasons, 
the questioning resulted in failure, and not for the first time either. Perhaps the old truth is that, in asking the wrong question, you are likely to receive the wrong answer. Over these last few months, we have all been confronted by challenging questions, which we had never expected to be asked to address in our day-to-day -day lives. All of the Gospel accounts show the closeness of Jesus' relationship with his Father, and that was translated into his everyday life. This is beautifully set out in Jesus' prayer in John 17. Recently, I was reminded of three tests that we are invited to apply to challenging questions. First, does what you propose to do have eternal value? Second, is this going to be a matter of spiritual life or death? This is a test from Deuteronomy, chapter 30, 19 to 20. And finally, does your response honour God? Of course, one size does not fit all situations, and at face value we might struggle applying all of these to this situation. Tax is always a contentious issue, but I'd like to suggest that the reputation of the tax collectors had more to do with the problem than the reality of payment of tax. As the King James Bible declares, Render unto Caesar the things which be Caesar's, and unto God the things which be God's. So big thank you to Christo for preparing that very interesting reflection for us. So as we now come to time of prayer, let us remember those people in those situations um, in need of our prayers at this moment and lift them up before God. Heavenly Father, we commit all our cares and our worries into your loving hands. As we pray for those people that we know are in need at the moment. We pray for those suffering in body, mind or spirit. And for the anxious and the lonely. We also remember those who are still in isolation or shielding due to the coronavirus. We pray for your protection over them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those affected by the coronavirus, for health workers, for those involved with research, or vaccine development and we pray for all those who are worried um, for family or loved ones we pray that all those who are sick may get the help that they need We also pray that you give us all wisdom to see what we can do and the willingness to do it in order to stop the spread of the virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Heavenly Father, we also pray for all those in authority those who have to make difficult decisions on behalf of um, on behalf of the people. We pray that you give them wisdom and that you inspire them to 
seek the common good and put the interests of the people before their own. We pray for those in authority in the church. In this diocese we pray for our bishops, Martin, Ruth and Will. We pray for all those who are working tirelessly to ensure that the reopening of churches for public worship continues to be safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, you gave up your Son out of love for the world. Lead us to ponder the mysteries of his passion, that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of our Saviour's blood, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We come now to the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I'll now sing verses five, six, and the last one called the doxology from um, hymn number 291. Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, 
Son, and Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen.